Most of you have heard of prebiotics. Most of you have even heard of probiotics. But have you heard of postbiotics? These molecules can help alleviate constipation, improve weight loss and insulin resistance, and may be the key to preventing cancers as well as leaky gut. Join me today on Dr. Osborne's Zone for a crash course on butyrate, the postbiotic. You unlock this door with the key of compassion. Beyond it is another world, a world of science, a world of common sense, a world of sanity. You're moving into a land of both empathy and ethics, of nutritional knowledge and empowerment. You've just crossed over into Dr. Osborne's zone. Welcome to Dr. Osborne's zone. Today we're gonna to do a crash course on the postbiotic butyrate. Butyrate is the byproduct of healthy bacteria that live in your gut eating fermentable fibers. In other words, when you eat foods that contain fibers, those fibers feed the bacteria that live in your gut, and the outcome of that feeding is a product called a short-chain fatty acid, SCFA for short. So again, it's produced by colonic flora when exposed to fiber. These fibers generally um, again, are broken down by your good bacteria, and the number one form of postbiotic short-chain fatty acid is something called butyrate. Now, why is butyrate so important? We always hear about why we should eat fiber, everything from, you know, constipation, uh, you know, improving bowel function to fiber stopping colon cancer or preventing colon cancer. Um, and if we look at one, some of the reasons why fiber has these benefits, butyrate is actually the reason. Remember, the fiber is the fuel source for your bacteria that live in your colon to produce the butyrate, and the butyrate has a number of different effects within the intestines and colon. And one of those is to regulate fluid transport. So it regulates fluid across the GI tract. So it helps to add fluid to a bowel, hence reducing the potential for constipation. It also regulates inflammation and oxidative stress in the gut lining. There are a number of mechanisms behind this. We'll get into these here in just a moment. But it aids in the prevention of leaky gut as well. Butyrate improves the secretion of mucin. Mucin is a substance that coats and lines the GI tract, and this is made possible largely uh, by the production of that substance, and then aids in intestinal motility, again, one through fluid, uh, but as well, it provides a fuel source. It's the primary fuel source for colon cells, which obviously need to be able to produce energy in order to do their work um, in terms of motility. So um, as, it, as a primary fuel source for those cells, this is one of the reasons why when, when a person has low levels of butyrate consistently, their risk for cancer, specifically colon cancer, increases. And so going back to why do doctors tell you to eat your fiber, it's to get to the butyrate. What do we need the butyrate for? As a fuel source for colon cells to reduce the potential for cancer, but also to improve motility and reduce the potential for constipation. And again, this is what we're talking about here, may reduce the risk of colon cancer. So let's look at some of the research on butyrate to help you understand a little bit more about why it's so important that you're making sure you're getting some. Okay, so you can see here in this study on human intestinal barrier function and health and disease, uh, this, this diagram holds a lot of information, so I'm gonna break down the important part around butyrate. So if you look here, you can see butyrate up here on the upper right um, is the substance being produced by your commensal bacteria when they're exposed to fiber, so that leads to that butyrate, but again, what does butyrate do? It does several different things. You can see it's a butyrate which has barrier protective properties. Well, what are those barrier protective properties? One is it helps in the production of mucin. It also helps in the production of something called secretory IgA, 
What is that? It's an antibody that helps keep your GI tract immunoprotected. Remember the, the act of eating, when you eat, you're eating all kinds of nefarious things. There's virus, bacteria, and many other types of nefarious things within the food. Even if it's organic food, this is why we have such a high concentration of immune power within our gut wall. And one of the major contributing factors to that immune power is the production of this antibody called IgA. And the way IgA works, it works a lot like a handcuff. It binds on to bad guys, so to speak, so that you can poop them out, so that these bad guys don't penetrate through. If you look at, at this diagram, each one of these is a cell in the intestine, you can see, and so that gap in between the cells, okay, that gap, that's a pathway, but if that gap is open, in essence, if there's a leakiness or a leaky gut, right, then now all the chemical compounds and other dangerous elements within your food, the bacterial toxins, etc., can leak through that barrier and then incite immune system responses. And this is why that IgA is so important because it prevents a lot of those things from being able to leak through by binding them and helping you pass them out through the stool. So again, butyrate plays a major role by making, helping make that mucin and helping make that, uh, that IgA antibody. So it helps in a sense, if you think about it, it helps in a sense pre prevent your gut from leaking aggressively. So again, playing a major role in how the gut functions. And what else does butyrate do? So let's look at the role of butyrate in colonic function. You can see in this study, so your review article um, recently published, and we've got butyrate exerts potent effects on a variety of colonic mucosal functions, such as inhibition of inflammation, as well as carcinogenesis, which means cancer causing or cancer generating, reinforcing various components of the colonic defense barrier and decreasing oxidative stress. Again, butyrate is short chain fatty acid, is a main end product of intestinal microbial fermentation of mainly dietary fiber. Butyrate's an important energy source for intestinal epithelial cells and plays a role in the maintenance of colonic homeostasis. So again, um, anti-inflammatory reduces the risk of cancer as well as an antioxidant. Um, now here we have another one on the protective mechanisms of butyrate on inflammatory bowel disease. And you can see in this one, butyrate can regulate the activation of regulatory T cells, um, which are specialized types of white blood cells in the colon wall in the intestinal wall, increasing the acetylation of histones and decreasing the activation of NFKB. In addition, it can also stimulate the mucus production from epithelial cells and the rearrangement of tight junction proteins. So again, helping prevent leaky gut. Okay, butyric acid in constipation. Let's talk, actually, let's talk about uh, the role it plays in constipation, at least the theoretic role uh, that's being published in this, in this um, research paper. So butyrate supports mucosal barrier function by stimulating intestinal mucus production. Again, we've seen that in a number of places. Butyric acid was documented to increase peristaltic efficiency. Peristalsis refers to the, to the neurological stimulation or movement or contraction of the muscles and the lining of the colon so that your poop can move through. Uh, effectively by improving colonic smooth muscle contractility and regulating intestinal neurotransmission, especially in the case of slow peristalsis. Moreover, all short chain fatty acids limit the active secretion of water, sodium, and chloride ions by the intestinal epithelial cells. These mechanisms of action of butyric acid seem to be useful in the treatment of defecation disorders. In other words, doctors are now and researchers are now using butyric acid or butyrate as a treatment option, viable treatment option for those with constipation, and they're finding you know, good outcomes or good results through those mechanisms. Now, one of the other functions of butyrate in the intestine is a role in the production of retinoic acid. Now, retinoic acid is vitamin A. And, and so you can see here, our data implicate that butyrate stimulates the epithelial capacity to produce retinoic acid, again, vitamin A, 
via an HDAC dependent mechanism. Together, this helps in the understanding of how short chain fatty acids can be associated with health benefits of dietary fiber. In other words, um, and you can see this diagram, an illustration of what these researchers found uh, is that the action of butyrate um, inhibits these deacetylation enzymes, which upregulates the production of retinoic acid or vitamin A, and then that vitamin A will then communicate to these specialized immune cells and help to regulate them, helps to regulate the production of different immune chemicals that keep balance of the immune system within the GI tract itself. One of the important components of vitamin A in the gut is this function of regulating how immune cells respond to friendly or foreign invaders. And again, that's done uh, largely in part through a mechanism that vitamin A produces. And of course, the butyrate enhances the ability for retinoic acid to be synthesized or produced in the intestine. So very, very important. Vitamin A is also very important for the regeneration of cell tissues in the gut lining. Uh, these epithelial cells in the gut lining need vitamin A to regenerate. So butyrate plays a role in that. Now, what's another one of these functions for butyrate? In inflammatory bowel disease induced by sleep deficiency. So how many of you have ever had uh, you know, a weekend binger or maybe had a, uh, a problem with sleep over a prolonged period of time. Well, one of the things that happens when we're sleep deprived is there is a damage that can occur, an acute damage that can occur to the bowel. In other words, sleep deficiency can, can induce bowel damage. And so you can see here, inflammatory bowel disease induced by sleep deficiency is a serious global public health threat. Butyrate, a member of the short chain fatty acids, exerts multiple effects on this process, our studies suggest that butyrate can be used as a probiotic to restore sleep-deprived induced inflammatory bowel disease and contribute to a better understanding of the mechanisms that govern the beneficial effects of butyrate. So again, butyrate as a molecule helps to heal and repair and reduce the inflammatory damage caused by sleep deprivation. So those of you maybe thinking, should, should I supplement with butyrate? Could there be a benefit for me to supplement with butyrate? And I would say, think about it in terms of, are you, are you struggling with your sleep? Are you not able to, to sleep? And are you also constipated? Is, is your gut inflamed? And butyrate supplementation might be a good idea uh, for you, at least to see if that extra intestinal. So those were all intestinal functions of butyrate. Now we're moving outside of the intestine, beyond the intestine. And so we know that butyrate plays a role in insulin sensitivity as well as a role in metabolism of fat. And let's talk about how it does these things. So you can see here in this first study, uh, just recently published, the role of the gut microbiome derived short chain fatty acid butyrate in hepatobiliary disease, so liver disease. Short chain fatty acid butyrate produced from fermentable carbs by gut microbiota in the colon has multiple beneficial effects on human health. At the intestinal level, butyrate regulates metabolism, helps in the transepithelial transport of fluids, in other words, water fluid, inhibits inflammation, which we talked about earlier, and induces the defense barrier, the liver receives a large amount of butyrate or short chain fatty acids via the blood flowing from the gut. There's a, a vein called the portal vein there. And butyrate helps prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, gallbladder and liver inflammation, and then cancer and liver injuries. It ameliorates metabolic diseases, including insulin resistance and obesity, and plays a direct role in preventing fatty liver disease. How does that happen? There are a number of mechanisms. One of the primary mechanisms of butyrate on in reduction of damage to the liver is in your gut lining, there are all types of bacteria and we're just going to draw them like this. And they're producing little toxins. These toxins that are produced by bacteria are referred to as LPS, lipopolysaccharides. What they can do is they can punch microscopic holes. If this is, again, the gut luminin or the gut, the tube of the gut, they punch holes through the gut lining, hence leaky gut. 
and then they traverse to the liver where they can then proceed to create damage to the liver, LPS. This has been studied really well, these lipopolysaccharides causing damage to the liver. Well, one of the functions of butyrate, as we mentioned earlier, was to seal off the barrier, right? To help produce that layer of mucus, to help create IgA, which can bind and re reduce the potential for these uh, chemical toxins produced by bacteria to enter into the portal circulation and damage the liver. So again, butyrate's playing a role even beyond its role in the gut. It, there's this old adage, a lot, of, a lot of you have probably heard of it, all diseases end and begin in the gut. And um, you know, butyrate's protective mechanism in the gut can prevent a lot of those diseases from spreading, or a lot of those problems from spreading from the gut into the bloodstream, creating systemic problems. But even beyond that, let's, uh, let's look at this diagram, um, you know, recently published in Frontiers of Endocrinology on the extra intestinal manifestations of butyrate and its function. So as you can see here, Again, dietary fiber consumption leads to a fermentation process by healthy bacteria of that fiber into butyrate. Butyrate then, in effect, is an energy source for colon cells, but uh, butyrate also penetrates through and triggers a gut hormone release it also enters portal circulation, traverses to the liver. Small, as you can see here, small amounts of butyrate reach also systemic circulation. And the effect of that butyrate systemically is an increase in thermogenesis, which means we're burning fat. But it's also improved beta cell function. Well, what is a beta cell? This is the pancreas. And beta cells produce insulin. And so, of course, insulin being the hormone that helps our, regulate our blood sugar, and without it, we have a, uh, well, with, that, with low amounts or with or resistant insulin, we end up, uh, you know, trending toward diabetes or pre-diabetic states. So, we know butyrate, systemically getting into the circulation can help with both fat burning as well as, uh, as insulin production through the beta cells. Now, we also have this study here from neuroscience uh, letters, butyrate neuroepigenetics in the gut microbiome. Can a high fiber diet improve brain health? Just some highlights from this study. Um, butyrate can protect the brain and enhance plasticity in neurological disease models. Again, these are, these are study models, not these research studies are pending in humans, but again, these are their findings preliminarily findings. Gut microbiota produce butyrate by fermenting carbohydrates in a high fiber diet. The hypothesis, a high fiber diet can elevate butyrate to prevent, treat brain disorders. Potentially, yes. I think the research is just starting to culminate uh, on this and we don't really have anything definitive, but it's certainly something scientists are looking at, the impact on the brain and on the nervous system as far as butyrate is concerned as well. There are research studies that link uh, neurological disorders to low fiber. There are a number of inflammatory disorders linked to low fiber intake. Again, this is a slide that shows you kind of food sources for butyrate. Um, and you'll see here fermented vegetables, and so this would be things like sauerkraut, um, if you like cabbage, fermented cabbage, or fermented cauliflower, fermented carrots, all good choices there. Um, cheese can contain butyrate. So these are all dairy, right? So yogurt, and again, if you're going to use dairy, my advice here, stick to A2, grass-fed, organic. Otherwise, you run the risk of, you know, multiple pesticide exposures. You also run the risk of reacting to that non-A2. There's a casein in dairy, um, and, if, and if it's A1 casein, it's been linked to autoimmune illness. If you haven't watched my crash course on dairy as a trigger for autoimmune disease, you might want to go back and check that out if you're not familiar between uh, the differences between A1 and A2 milk. But if you're going to use the dairy, it needs to be this. Now, if you're gluten sensitive, there's a caveat here. Many people, about 50% of the people with gluten sensitivity in some research studies have allergies or allergic reactions to dairy. So I would say if you're 
one of those individuals, be cautious. I mean, you may be watching the show and thinking, I want to get more butyrate. And, and you may be tempted here, but if you're reacting to that dairy, not a good idea to consume those foods. I would stick to this over here. Now, some of you might also be thinking, um, you know, what else can I eat? Well, there are a lot of vegetables that contain fiber that you could consume that also would help your GI tract make butyrate. But one of the problems here with a high fiber diet, there are several, let's talk about high fiber diets because some studies show that high fiber for some people increases constipation and inflammation in the GI tract. This isn't for everyone. I'm not, I'm, I don't want you guys to think I'm generalizing here for all of you. But, you know, it's commonly said, doc, you go to the doctor, you're constipated, they say eat more fiber, you, you've already, you already eat enough fiber and you're still dealing with this problem and, you know, what do you do uh, when that's the only advice that you're getting? Again, there's a, there's a, uh, a large uh, percentage of the population that has problems with high fiber. So how do you get your, my, we're going back to how do you get your butyrate if you can't consume fiber because when you consume it, it bothers you. And this is, is actually a lot of the people following like carnivore diets or keto diets that are lower in fiber, higher in animal products. One of the reasons they do this is because they fit that group of individuals that when they eat high fiber, they don't feel good. That eating a lot of plant-based foods wrecks them. A lot of different reasons why that can happen. And so, again, if you're, if you're one of those individuals, but you're allergic to dairy, butyrate's going to be a tough, uh, a tough thing to get in your diet. So that's why I'm bringing this up. You want to you wanna make sure um, that if you're one of those people struggling and you can't eat those foods, you might want to, this is where you might want to consider supplementation. So again, high fiber, we, we can get butyrate indirectly from high fiber diets. But one of the other caveats is beyond whether or not you react to food, uh, fruits and vegetables with fiber poorly, again, many of you do, there's also this problem, which is antibiotic use. And so many of you have this history of antibiotic use. And so your gut microbiomes are, um, are in poor shape. And so you may be eating this fiber, but you don't have you know, adequate microbial activity within your gut because of antibiotic use, where, where you, so you can't get to the butyrate. You can't generate it very effectively. And so this is where um, if you've taken an antibiotic uh, or taken multiple antibiotics, you might want to consider in this situation a prebiotic plus a probiotic because taking those, two, and what a prebiotic is, is generally it's, it's some degree, it's some type of resistant starch or fiber. Uh, large arabinoglactin is a common one used, um, but it's, it's oftentimes referred to as a prebiotic. And then a probiotic are the bacteria, right? So what you're doing is you're putting in your gut, you're putting the fiber in with the bacteria in a supplement form to get to the butyrate. Um, and then some people might, just consider supplementing with the butyrate directly, which is oftentimes referred to as a postbiotic. So you're hearing these new, you probably are hearing these new terms if you're, if you're tuned in to the nutrition realm, you know, the prebiotic, the probiotic, and the postbiotic. But if you've got a history of antibiotics, you definitely should be on a probiotic, you know, both, both before, during, and after the antibiotic use to, to try to ensure that this is not happening to you where you can't get the butyrate. Because if you can't get the butyrate, you increase the risk of leaky gut, you increase the risk of the development of autoimmune problems, you increase the risk of gaining weight, and you potentially increase the risk of certain types of cancer in your intestine, but also increase the risk of insulin resistance, which can lead to a host of other types of cardiovascular risks, which you don't want to have, right? So you need butyrate. Butyrate's a pretty important uh, substance for the overall gut integrity and the gut health. And again, if you've got that antibiotic history or if you're not drinking filtered water, remember that there are naturally occurring antibiotics in your drinking water in the form of chlorine. You know, this is chlorine is an additive to the water and um, 
You know, again, if you're if you're drinking chlorinated water, it acts as an antibiotic. That's you know most a lot of the antibiotics have chlorine or other halo, halogenated biocides in them, like um, chlorine, bromine, and fluoride, commonly used to destroy bacteria. And then there are also there are a number of different food additives and other chemicals that can behave similar to an antibiotic, which is one of the reasons why so many people have such poor microbiomes in their GI tract. So. Again, it filter your water, get the chlorine out of your water. When it, once it gets to your house, you want to have a good filter in place, a good granular activated carbon filter, a good reverse osmosis filter would do the trick for that. And of course, limit your use uh, of these unless you absolutely need them. You don't let your doctor prescribe you an antibiotic just in case. And we see this a lot where doctors prescribe the antibiotic not confirming that there's an infection, just, you know, maybe there might be, so let's try the antibiotic. Uh, as a as a treatment, that's a bad idea. You should use these very very judiciously. Obviously, we want to be able to get to that butyrate, and if we can't because we don't have a good uh, probiotic base, and the fiber, this is this is in a lot of part how a lot of people start reacting is they've got such a long term history of using antibiotics, their microbiome is decimated, and then when they try to eat a bunch of fiber, they have different species of microbes in their gut. Those microbes don't do well with all that fiber, it creates, you know, this other scenario over here. And so now you don't know what to do because again, the food sources as far as is, is um, butyrate directly, direct butyrate are concerned is that, you know, if you're going to eat butyrate directly, you can get it here. But if you don't tolerate that, it's not good. And if you're allergic to the dairy, it's also not good. So again, use antibiotics judiciously. Now, should you supplement with butyrate? I think first, before we talk about supplementation, um, let's talk about testing for butyrate deficiency. There are tests that can be done. Your doctor can order them that will measure your level of butyrate in your intestine. And I highly recommend that if you're, um, if you're considering whether or not butyrate may, may be a good move for you, get testing done. Um, and this again can be done with a stool sample. Now, if you're going to supplement with butyrate, uh, relatively safe dose is 300 to 900 milligrams per day orally in capsule form is very safe uh, with no major side effects or no major problems. If you struggle with constipation, if you struggle, if you've been told you had IBSC, um, this may be something that you might want to consider supplementing to support healthy bowel motility and bowel function. If you've ever had a colonoscopy and they found polyps, um, this may be another indication that you might consider using um, supplemental butyrate as a, as a tool. So again, IBS. Type C constipation or polyps. If you've been told you have leaky gut by your doctor, you know, that might be another indication for you to maybe consider using butyrate supplementally to support healthy bowel function. But, you know, ultimately, it's always best, in my opinion, to test as opposed to guess. You certainly could use it because there's no real great danger in taking supplemental um, butyrate. You know, you're certainly welcome to try it if you feel like it might be supportive or helpful for you. But if you've got these situations going on, you might really consider asking your doctor whether or not supplementing butyrate is right for you. If you've got questions about butyrate, make sure you ask them below. And as always, don't forget to tune in every Thursday at 1230 for live Q&A. So if you want to show up on Thursday and ask your butyrate questions, feel free to do so. But thanks so much for tuning in to Dr. Osborne's Zone. If this information was helpful, make sure you smash the like button and share it with somebody who you love. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in to the Dr. Osborne Zone. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for more content like this. And make sure you come back next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and Thursday at noon 30 for more episodes.